I will praise you, Lord, in the good and the bad, in the victories when I feel I've lost. I will praise you. I will do my best throughout the days to remember to speak and talk to you and share my life with you. And, and I will praise you. Even if I'm having a bad day, I, I got to just fight the disappointment and know that you're there. I will praise you. I will tell how you've worked in my life. I, I will tell others how, how you brought me up out of the pit, how you changed an individual, how you gave hope to a life that was hopeless. I will tell others of your works. I will tell what you have done for me. I will be the best man I can. I, I will do my best to show love to others and care for my children and my wife and those in my life, my co-workers, our wonderful team. I will strive to apply the word of God in my life. I will try to live the walk that you have for me. I will. And I will sing. I will sing a song that is beautiful to your ears. I, I will try to live my life in a, in a way that pleases you. I, I will sing with the raspy voice that you have given me. I will praise you, Lord, as best I can. I will try to make my life a beautiful song. I will. You see, in this passage we're going to look about look at today, there are four I wills. And I think if we can apply these to our lives, it will change the way we live our life. Because God is marvelous. He is amazing. He will take care of us and he will bless us. But it takes action in our part, ladies and gentlemen. I will is the name of this sermon tonight. And I pray that it blesses you and helps you and, and keeps you along your path. And I pray that it speaks to your heart as it does to me. And it, it, it's only two verses in Psalms, Psalms 9, verse 1 and 2. And we have it up here on our board for those of you who are here today in our Aurora, Colorado facility. Thank you so much. Inspire Church Family Online, I love you. I thank God for you. You're such a blessing to this ministry, to our outreach ministry. We're going to be out on the streets in a couple of weeks again. We've got a little weird month here where we have a couple of Saturdays off. So it's a good time to rest, get a few things organized. But we'll be back out there loving, caring, and blessing people. Continue to donate financially, donate clothes, send some granola bars, whatever it is. Y'all know what we need, but we need you also to join us out on the streets the first Saturday in August. That's the next month coming up. First Saturday in August, Havana and Colfax, 10 a.m. I need you to come out and help us, all right? Cool. And uh, thank you for being a part of the Inspired Church ministry. Leave a comment, a prayer request. I will reply to you personally. You can message me, whatever. I'll do my best to help in any way that I can. My message today is entitled, I Will. I will read this passage to you. And uh, I pray that it blesses you. Psalms 9, 1 through 2 reads, I will praise you, O Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. We 
can always try and rely on other people to do God's work. And hallelujah, we had some amazing people along the way. We had Billy Graham, all these different people. Uh, my dad, I'll throw him in there. Just, just people after people who have done great things and preached to thousands and millions and brought millions to Christ. But you see, the reality is we're here for a purpose. We're here for a reason. The fact that we can draw a breath means God has something for us to do. And we need to take ownership of those in our lives and the people that we have influence over. And most importantly, I think a passage like this speaks personally to us. It speaks personally to the individual. You see, because what we have to understand is these four I wills that are listed in this passage was David's dedication to exuberant worship. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we can go through life with our little rituals that we have. We wake up at a certain time, we say about the same prayer, maybe we open the word of God, but more than likely we probably don't. We go about our day, come this or that, or when we get an opportunity, we open the Bible, we read a little bit here or there. Maybe we catch a video on, the, on YouTube or wherever it is, on Facebook. Something inspires us. And that doesn't mean we don't love God. That doesn't mean we're not faithful in what we're trying to do. That doesn't mean we're not trying to change ourselves. But I think sometimes we have to dedicate ourselves a little harder. And I know this is not something that is preached on much in churches or things like that. The fact that you need a little discipline, that you need to commit yourself to follow Christ. The word of God speaks here about a dedication to worship, a dedication to God, a dedication to what we do. Psalms 9 verse 1 speaks, I, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Not just a little bit of my heart. Not, not just this one foot. Okay, God, I'll, I'll give you one Sunday a month. <laughs> I'll give you one Sunday a month. I'll, I'll do my best to try to get to that church down the street or wherever it may be. I'll give you this much of my time, Lord. You know I'm busy. You know I got kids. You know I got all this time allotted. I can do three videos a week where someone's preaching or whatever the case may be. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that's fine. And that's great. If that's the time you've got, that's the time you've got. Because we do have to, we, we do have to take care of our children and our lives and pay our bills and all these things. But I need personally to go in wholeheartedly. I've lived the one foot out, one foot in lifestyle, and it's, it's just not as fulfilling. You see, the definition of wholehearted is showing or characterized by complete sincerity and commitment. I'll read that yet again. Wholehearted means, the definition, is showing or characterized by complete sincerity and commitment. And commitment. So I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. And I know that's not always easy because we're torn in many ways, and maybe we've been church hurt, and we've had this issue and this issue, and we've been stabbed in the back by this and that. And a lot of times we blame God. A lot of times we we, we cast the hurts of this world onto the Heavenly Father. But I will. I will. I think we need to make that commitment today. We need to put ourselves in the, in, in the shoes of someone who is making a commitment to God. I will. Oh, I will praise you, oh Lord, with my whole heart. And that means a complete sincerity and commitment. We live in an uncommitting world. Not even wedding vows mean that much anymore. 
You tell people, yeah, I'll meet you there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll give this. Yeah, I'll help you out with no intention of ever showing up. This world is uncommitted. About the only thing I see people committed to nowadays is politics. That's it. They're, they're not committed to relationships. They're not committed to their churches. They're not committed. I hate to say it, but rarely to the Father. If we could have a little more sincere commitment to God, how we could change this earth, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. The passage continues on and it says in verse 1, Psalms 9, I will tell of all your marvelous works. This is the second I will in this passage. I will tell. Now, we all have a testimony. We all have areas of our lives where God has worked and, and, and changed situations and healed and touched our family members, paid bills, I pray, has healed health, a lot of different things. We all have struggles in our lives where God's picked us up, carried us through the hard times. I'll tell you, this whole past three years we've been dealing with, <laughs> with this whole pandemic thing, is a testimony that we're still here and we're still standing and and there's some sense of sanity in our lives living through something that has never been lived through before on this scale. But so many times we timidly hide in our homes or in the back of the church and we do share, perhaps, with our closest friends. Oh, God came through. He did this. He did that. I hate that phrase. God showed up. God came through. God's always there. God's constantly working. You see, ladies and gentlemen, always there. God, help me through this situation. But rarely do I see people proclaiming God and his marvelous works in their lives. As I look through Facebook, it's part of my job. We're a social media church as well as a physical location and an outreach ministry. The part of my job is to lift up and inspire and help people along the way to change aspects of their lives. So I do spend a lot of time on social media And I see a lot more hurt than a lot more, a lot more hurt than I do praise. I see a lot more trouble than I do people saying hallelujah, God did this and God did that. I see a lot more, I know they're believers in Christ. I know they're solid. I know them personally, but all I see posted on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and all these different places is anger and rage and questions. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell of your marvelous works. That's the mindset that we need. That is the way that we should approach our lives. You know, yes, we all have troubles. I have troubles. We have things in our lives that we're dealing with that are hard. That are terrible. We have loved ones who are days away from passing away. We have relationship issues in our lives. We have financial issues with the ministry and the church. Personally. Just trying to survive and pay bills. But I choose to trust God with those things and proclaim his 
marvelous works as best I can. Because I've made a decision to do that. And it's not easy some days to post something nice or make a short video about how, how great, how, how great God is when earlier in the morning I've been struggling and fighting doubt. You see, we have to be committed, ladies and gentlemen. We have to go before God and say, okay, Lord, you know we're dealing with all of these issues and things and as well as everybody else on this earth, but, but I, I will tell of your marvelous works because God has got us through and me through situation after situation, and God has got you through situation and situation and issue after issue. pray that you recognize that it is God that did it. Ladies and gentlemen, today we need some I wills. Today we need some I wills. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. And you see what marvelous means? The, the definition of a marvelous is causing great wonder and extraordinary and also extremely good or pleasing and splendid. You see, our God is marvelous. Causing great wonder and extraordinary. All you got to do is look up at the sky on an evening where the clouds aren't there and see what God has created. All you have to do is Go into your backyard and maybe you have cactus and see how they were designed and raised or maybe you have grass or whatever it is or, or go to a park or go look at the Rocky Mountains right here in Denver and see the Continental Divide right before your very eyes. Oh, if you live by the ocean, praise God, I wish I did. I love Colorado, don't get me wrong. Go to the sea and look out over it and it's endless and endless and endless. You see, our God causes wonder. Our God is extraordinary. Our God is extremely good. He is pleasing and splendid. Hallelujah. Our God is marvelous. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all of your marvelous works. Verse 2, we're looking at Psalms 9. It says, I will be glad and rejoice in you. Ah, you see, ladies and gentlemen, we got to walk the walk. I was just listening to a sermon earlier, a snippet of a sermon, you know, and it, 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 it talks about saying you're going to do something and following through. And I know there's always issues that arise and sometimes we make do the best of our lives to make our appointments and different things. We tell people we'll pray for them and then they're gone out of our head in about a moment. We see someone in the supermarket and they tell us an issue or something that's going on in their lives and we say, yeah, all right, well, I'll keep that in prayer. I'll keep that in prayer. And we walk down to the next aisle and we forget we even got, saw the person in there. We get a message, somebody asking for help or whatever it may be. And we, you know, you say, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I can't financially help, whatever it is. And, but, 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 but I'll pray for you. You see, ladies and gentlemen, pray now. Pray then. It doesn't matter if you're in a supermarket or getting your tires fixed 
or you're out on the sidewalk, wherever it is, pray then. I got convicted of that heavily many, several years back when I was talking to someone and I shared an experience right there in the supermarket. And I said, just keep me in prayer. You know, struggling a little bit. And the gentleman said, let's pray now. Why wait? Let's do this. You see, it's the I will, ladies and gentlemen. I will be glad and rejoice in you. It's, it's the commitment to doing it now. Walking the walk. Not showing fear as best that we can. You see, ladies and gentlemen, to rejoice is to feel or show joy or great delight. Hallelujah. So if somebody says, I need your prayer, I need your help, say, let's do it now. I will show, Lord, through my life the great joy and delight that you bring me. We can do that in so many ways. By listening to someone, by putting our phone down. I know that's a big issue. It's an issue with me too. It's an issue in our household. We all have electronic devices. We all have YouTube channels. We all have multiple Facebook accounts, all these different things. And many times we're all sitting there, me, Axel, and Q Kim on our phones, on our tablets, whatever it is, barely talk, and I understand. It is the way of the world today. We can do better. I need to do better of putting it aside and, and, and paying attention. You see, but there is also opportunities via the World Wide Web to encourage, to love, to, to bring together fellowship, to bring together others. You know, if, if we had not started our online ministry all those years back, this church would not have survived to where it is today. Would not be here. We almost closed the doors three times. And it's through you, our online family, our people all around the world who, who love, support, tithe, and give to this ministry that we're able to go out on the streets and pray with people and love on people and, and make the little videos that encourage and inspire all around the world. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I will be glad and rejoice in you. God has given us opportunities to share him with others. We have to take it. We have to grab the opportunity. We have to humble ourselves. And do what others may think we're crazy to do. And that is to load a car full of stuff, to go onto a busy public street, stand there looking like freaks, Jesus freaks, as they drive by and give us the finger sometimes or just look at us like we're just idiots in order to find the one who needed us that day who needed to be encouraged, who needed a hug, who needed someone to say, can I pray for you? Who needed a sandwich? Who needed a clean pair of socks? It's okay if you think I'm dumb or I'm making the problem worse, God said go. So I will joyously go and do it. You see, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we gotta get out of our comfort zones. I'm much more comfortable right here, right now, than I am on the street. But every time I get out there, I know that's where I am to be. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. 
the last, the fourth of the I wills, the small passage says, I will sing praise to your name, O most high. We have to let our voices be heard. We have to let our voices be heard. We have to let our voices be heard. And if that means getting out of your comfort zone and sharing with someone what God has done for you, then so be it. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name. Oh, most high. You see, ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that God laid on my heart many years ago as I was reading the word, I don't know, maybe preparing for a message or working in a church and doing the different things that I've done in ministry, was that my life was to be a song. just something personal. I, know, I don't think the word of God, it may say that your life should be a song, but it's something between me and God. Because music is important. I love music. I, I, I love to hear something beautiful and calming or heavy and hard. You know, music has always been a good part of my life. And God created music for a reason. He knew that we needed calming down. He knew that we needed to be cheered up. He knew that we needed to dance and to sing. And just in my own mind, I said, okay, God, I pray. My life is a song to you, a good song. Maybe up there real high on the charts, you know. <laughs> that as you watch me in my life, brings a smile to your face as I stumble around trying to do the best that we can. And as we sing this song that is our lives, you know, I pray that God's got his toe tap and saying, all right, you're doing all right. You're getting better. You're, you're, you're getting stronger. Uh-huh. And maybe, just maybe, this struggle that is our life, this song that is our life unto God. God gets up and he does a little, a couple of moves, you know, and says, yes, yes, you're doing it. You're doing what I asked you to do. Your commitment means a lot. Your love for others means the world to me. And you put a smile on God's face. Hallelujah. I will, Lord, as best as I can, sing a song to you. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I will praise you, O oh Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you, and I will sing praises to your name, O oh, Most High. God, you hear our cry today. You hear our commitment to you. Lord, maybe some of us have not been that committed. We can do better. So, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our inactivity. Forgive us of our wishy-washy attitudes sometimes. Forgive us, Lord, for just not spending time to you, Lord. Forgive us. And perhaps today we can say, I will. Lord, I will praise you. I will tell of you. I will be a testimony for you. 
and I will sing a song with my life to you. Ladies and gentlemen, today just tell God I will. I will, Lord. I will, Lord. I will. But perhaps someone hearing this message, hearing these words, wherever you may be, you never said yes to Christ. You never turned yourself over to him. You know that he died upon a cross for your sins. Shed his blood upon that cross that day and was buried in a tomb and three days later arose from the dead and at this moment is sitting at the right hand of the Father and Jesus went through all of that for you to give you salvation, eternal life. feel today that draw to give your life to him that you may have peace love and joy in abundance and eternal life just say speak to yourself speak it into your mind speak it out loud say Jesus come into my heart forgive me of my sins make my home in heaven with you I give you my life Lord I want to spend eternity and if you just said that prayer and you meant it, message me, contact me. I would love to help you to grow in God as best I can. So God, we give you our lives. And Lord, I will.